Okay, let's start uh, creating our new HTML template. So we're going to go into uh, settings. And then we're looking for email templates. A new template. And we're going to call this Tesco. And the description wants to be Tutorial. Tutorial. I hope we spelled that right. We get an option now to to um, declare this as being a personal email template or one that everybody can use. We'll leave this one as public for the time being. The subject is the actual subject line in your email when it goes out, so which you can edit before you send it, but this is the one that will populate it by default. So the first thing we'll do is we'll put in the Tesco. Tesco News. Okay. Now, the first thing we want to do is go into the templates folder. And we're going to pick a template that's got image and text. Now the reason we're going to do that is by default the email template does, does sorry, the email program doesn't have a image in it and it's not easy to insert one without coding. So by bringing one in through the template we can copy and paste it which uh, you'll see in a little while. I'm going to just delete the text. The next thing we want to do is insert a table from there. We get a dialog box that comes up. It's asking us how many rows we want, and we're going to create this one with four rows, and we're just going to put the one column for the time being. Now the border size will actually show as a black line unless you tell it not to, and, and border size is uh, the thickness between one and ten. Um, on this occasion, we don't want the border. We'll still be able to see it. It will be vi visual while we're building a template, although invisible to anybody who. Um, uh, anybody who actually sees the email when we're finished. The alignment is just saying where do we want the table on the page of the email and we're going to put it in the center. The width of the table, now that's in pixels or we can choose a percentage of the screen. Now because we're going to be using fixed size images we're going to use a fixed size table and in this case we're going to go for 550 the height will be automatic. It will change uh, dynamically as we're changing the um, as we're changing the content. And we can leave cell spacing and cell padding at one. We click OK, and there you can see we've got our table. So the first thing we're going to do is get your, get the picture into the table. So we click on it, and you right mouse click to cut. and then paste it inside the box. Okay. Now that there's no content to that image just yet, but at least we've done it. So this is where our planning pays off. We know that uh, we're going to have a, an image at the very top. We're also going to have an image um, in the second row, so we'll do that at the same time. So we'll right mouse click and copy this time. And paste that into there into the row and also in the very bottom row where we add an image as well. Okay, now all we've got to do is tell the um, program where those images are. So now we've got a table on our page with three images set. So we'll put the first image in and we do that. We click on the image, right mouse clip and image properties. Now in the image properties box it asks for URL. That is the address on the internet where the picture is stored. Now I've already got Flickr open here which is um, 
going to have to copy the address first. We're going to drop to Flickr. It's the first Tesco image that we want. Just going to click on it to bring it up. And uh, we're going to do all sizes. And you'll see grab the photos URL. So it's there. So we can just click on it and copy. Go back to our email template. Open the image properties again. Command V. And you'll see that the Tesco image is, uh, appears. Let's not worry about the size for a second. Now the alternative text, if somebody has a, an email um, program that uh, doesn't allow Im images to be opened, then this is the text that will be displayed. So it wants to be descriptive as you can. So Tesco logo. Now by default it opens up at the box size which was 100 pixels by 100 pixels. Now to reset the image to the original size we click on the reset size button on the, on the right and that will bring it back up and the actual size of that image was 125 by 45. That's fine. We can now adjust that image down. You don't want to adjust an image upwards, up, upsize it because it will become pixelated and, and poor quality but you can reduce the size if you needed to. So if we were to change that to 100 it automatically keeps it in into scale. We'll put it back to the original 125. Do we want a border around the picture? No we don't. Um, H space and V space is if we wanted padding around the, um, the image itself. So if I put in some horizontal space you'll see the text just there move across. So if I put in there 20 you see how we get some space between the text and the image. Okay this is going in a cell all on its own so we don't we don't need any and we can, can come back to it later. Vertical is the space underneath it so if I put in 20 there you'll see that we've got space below. And where do we want the text to be aligned? If it was um, baseline, you'll see the text starts at the bottom of the image. So that's not where the picture is aligned, it's where the text is aligned to the picture. We'll click OK. So there we have it. <coughs> now, if we click on the preview page, let's have a look at what we've got so far. That's what we've got, two blank image holders and the Tesco logo that we've put. We'll close that. Now we're going to repeat that process for the other. Paste it in, alternative text, we'll call it Tesco offer. Resize it to the original, which is 555. Now, I don't know if you remember, but we, we arranged the, the, the width of our table to be 550. So we'll just reduce that slightly to fit. Click OK. We're done. And last but not least, all sizes. So on large. Command C. To copy. Go back to the template, image properties, I'm going to paste it, alternative text, we'll call it club card width, original size, we want to make this 550 the same as the other one, that's okay. Okay, let's um, preview that again and see what we've got. Now we're starting to get the formation of an HTML template. 